Now let's take dilations a step further and dilate about a point that is not at the origin. So I have this applet here and you can see you can play with the dilation factor, the scale factor, and what that does is that adjusts the size of the dilation. But now let's look at the point where we dilate about. Here I'm moving the point of dilation and you can see that the image is moving. But one thing that's not happening to the image is it's not changing size. So the point of dilation doesn't really determine the size of the object. Um, it just determines the location of the object. So what we're going to do is move point P, negative 2 comma 3, and set the scale factor to 2.5 to get this image right here. That's the same applet I was just using. And I'm going to multiply, we're going to use the old rule we had before, which was just multiplying the points by the scale factor, assuming that that's the point of dilation. My software shows you where the image should be. Let's see if multiplying the points by the scale factor works. Well, I'm going to get 5 and 2.5. I'm using a crazy scale factor of 2.5 here. And after I multiply these out, you're going to see that the coordinates do not match. Point A here says it should be at 5 comma 2.5. That would be up here instead of where it is. And the reason is, is because the point of dilation is not at the origin, I can't use this rule anymore of just multiplying the scale factor by the coordinates. So what could we do? Well, um, since we cannot multiply the pre-image coordinates by the scale factor when it's not at the origin, why don't we change the problem so P is at the origin? So what I'm going to do is a transformation, a translation, moving the point P to the origin. So here's my dilation I want to do with a scale factor of 2.5. And let's start by translating P to the origin. So now I have the point there. Okay, and I also want to use the same translation on the pre-image. So it's over here now. Well, let me go ahead and write down the coordinates for everything after translating it. So I'm going to be sliding 2 to the right and 3 down, which is, by the way, the opposite of the coordinates of my point, just for your reference. Okay, so I've got my new coordinates for point P is at the origin, A is at 4 comma negative 2, B is at 4 comma 2, and C is at um, 6 comma to ND is at 6, negative 2. Now let's try dilating the point. And I'm still using the crazy scale factor of 2.5. So now I've applied 2.5 and multiplied all these points by 2.5. And I'm going to go ahead and the next step is to translate it backwards. So instead of going right to backwards 3, now I'm going to go negative 2 comma 3 to take my point P back where it was. Well that puts my point P back and as you can see if you look at the original coordinates from the image we had this matches the dilation we did. So basically we can dilate around a point that's not the origin if we translate that point first to the origin and the preimage, do the dilation and then translate it back. I will show you an equation that does the whole thing as a shortcut, but I think it's a good idea for you to do this stepwise just so you can get used to it, and then pretty soon you'll probably see, oh, that's how it's always working. So again, a dilation about point P with coordinates A and B and scale factor K can be written as a composition of a dilation about the origin and two translations. So what it's going to look like, first of all, this is from left to right. Remember when we have our functions here, our, our transformations, that we go from, I'm sorry, from right to left. We go from right to left. So I'm going to do the opposite of the point because I'm trying to take it to the origin, which is 0, 0. So that's why you see the negative A, negative B there. Do my dilation and then put my ba point back where it was. The other way to write this is with the x comma y and the arrow. So first of all, I'm still going to move my point, um, translate it, so it goes to the origin. So if it was at a, I need to subtract a to get it to zero. 
and I'm going to do that for my pre-image as well. Then after I do that, I do the dilation by multiplying everything by k. Then I translate it back by adding the points back in. So you can see that if you go straight from here to here, that will give you your transformation. And this may remind you a little bit of the transformations when you were sliding uh, functions around in Algebra 1. It's not exactly the same because here these are just the x-coordinate and this is just the y-coordinate, but it's similar. So in this example, I'm going to go ahead and just rewrite the dilation. We're not going to do it. We're just going to write it in the right notation. So first of all, I like this form of notation. It works for me. So I'm going to say dilation around point P with scale factor K, and this is what we're using from what we just got, is first of all starting right to left, translation back to the origin from that point, dilation around the origin, and then translate back to the point. So filling in all my numbers, that's pretty much the, the transformation I will have to do. The other way I can write it is where I'm going to go use again this form where I have the k and the a, and it's going to be 3.4 times x plus 2 minus 2, and 3.4 times y minus 2 plus 2. Now in this example, we're going to go ahead and do a dilation of the image and, and provide the final coordinates. So again, steps are dilate p uh, to the origin. So p here is at 3 comma, I'm sorry, negative 3 comma 7. So I need to go right 3 down 7. That's this transformation, this translation right here. Then I'm going to dilate around the origin with a scale factor of 0.5 and then go backwards 3, up 7, and move everything back where it was. So here's my point being translated down to the origin, and there's my pre-image being translated. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the dilation on this red image. So this is half. Now remember, because it's half, it's going to be smaller and closer to my point of dilation. Then I'm almost done. All I have to do is slide it back up the same way that it came, and that is my final image. And the coordinates for that are 7 comma 3, and then B here is at 4 comma 6, C is at 6 comma 7, and D is at 9 comma 6. Now I kind of have some of my points messed up on this image. My main point, you notice how I have the three primes here. That's because you could say, well, this is one transformation, here's the second transformation, there's a third transformation. Um, I'm not going to be real nitpicky on the primes, but I also want you to be used to seeing them so that if they show up in a question, it doesn't throw you off. So let's reflect. Why can't we just multiply the pre-image by the scale factor for all dilations? Well, the main thing when you're doing dilations about a different point is that we're measuring distances to that point. And the scale factor applies to those distances. The image will still be the same spot, I mean the same size, but where it is will change. So it won't give you the right coordinates. What are the steps for dilating a pre-image about a point not at the origin? Well, just translate both. The same way you get the point to the origin, translate your pre-image. Do your dilation and translate back. So why does shifting the pre-image first work for these dilations? That's a good question. How come I can go ahead and move this, um, my, like my zero, zero, and it works? Well, I guess one way to look at it is if you graph it, and when we're doing dilations, we're talking about the sizes of the objects and everything. That's a real impact of dilations. Does it really matter if I dilate an object and then move it somewhere else? Um, and then move it back. It's like I can take it off the paper, off the grid. So think about that, how if we just took away the grid and we we're just doing the dilation, couldn't you just put it back on the grid wherever you want? And the only difference is really a translation.